from at pumpkins182. What is on your bucket list? I'd really like to have a cat, but that's living life on the edge because I'm allergic. What's up, y'all? This is Kashi. Let's find out what y'all ask about me. I'm a little nervous. At Inorinator asks, what's your favorite song of yours? My favorite song of mine is a song. It's gonna be on my upcoming album. It is track seven. And this is a song called Hell Heaven. Unlike anything I've ever made before, it's just kind of fucking nuts and it blows my mind. I can't believe I, I made it with Ely, but I can't believe like we made such a thing. So um, yeah, Hell Heaven, track seven. At RBDTKU asks, how many tattoos do you have? I have two. One of them takes the entire span of my arm. And then the other one are the zodiac signs of my family. My sleeve on my right arm is a traditional um, Japanese sleeve that I got in Shinjuku. But I can show you a bit of it. Like I have peonies here, I have like a tiger here, I have waves among like the bars and everything. And then I have a couple more peonies. I have one right here and like one right here. And it just goes all the way. So if you've ever seen a traditional Japanese tattoo, that's what it looks like. Very grateful. Shout out to Wakatomo for doing ink on my body and I can't wait to see you again for my next arm. At Yu asks, when did you start playing the guitar? I started playing the, the guitar when I was, uh, I wanna say like 12 years old, 11 or 12 years old. My grandpa gave me my first guitar. My process for like learning was all like self-taught. I would um, like just get home from school, go onto ultimateguitar.com, like type in like so-and-so song and like just figure it out. Hey there, Delilah was really popping. Anything by the Playing My Tees was popping. Ed Sheeran was popping. I learned like some Metallica stuff too. I can't help falling in love with you, Elvis, you know. The Beatles were up there for sure. Learned a lot of like basic music theory and stuff from just like doing covers. I think covers are probably the best way to learn. What was it like when you found out you were going to be making a song for the Shang-Chi soundtrack? I thought it was an amazing thing. I remember getting sent the song, which is called War With Heaven, and it was in immediately like infectious, immediately catchy, and I loved it. I remember when the song like finally released, I had gotten a reception from friends and family that I, I hadn't gotten, not like I hadn't gotten it before, but it, it had been a while. At the end of the day, I realized like, oh, it's not just like any movie, it's a Marvel movie. And that meant a lot to people, especially in the Asian American community. It just felt like a landmark win to them. And it was interesting because it was so visceral, like seeing it from my friends and my family. So I'm very proud. Fun fact about that song is that I actually didn't write or produce that track, which is the first time for me ever because I always have to be like in the song's DNA. But I think that's just a testament to how good the song was when they sent it to me. I remember hearing the vocals, like the demo vocals, and they did things in the vocal cut that like I wouldn't gravitate towards, but I made the effort to stay as loyal as I could to every single note because I didn't want to fix what wasn't broken. And um, yeah, it's an amazing song. Props to everyone involved. Thank you for letting me cut it. Google asks, what did Keshi do before music? I was a nurse. I worked as a nurse, as an oncology nurse for a year and a half in the Texas Medical Center. And I hung chemotherapy and took care of patients there. Shout out 20 Tower. And uh, I've always been doing music my whole life. So when I tell people that I was a nurse, they get this impression like, oh wow, and then you just transitioned into music, but that's not how it was. I was doing music my whole life. I just got lucky. How did Keshi get discovered? I made Keshi in college as like an anonymous SoundCloud account because I wanted to learn how to produce just not in the eye of like family and friends. And also I felt that validation from like strangers or people from the internet meant way more than people who knew you and they were trying to save your feelings or like falsely like make you think that you were doing a good job when maybe you weren't. I learned a lot and it was really liberating, honestly. It started getting like a fan base and like that was really cool to me. Like I got like 20 fans on SoundCloud. That was awesome. It got to a point where like some YouTube channels, like contact aggregators would ask like, hey, like we love your song, Magnolia, can we feature it on our YouTube channel and et cetera. And I was like, yeah, sure, like go ahead. And it just was the tiniest like snowball effect that just like kept on slowly growing 
and growing and growing. Honestly, like I never went into any room and was like, hey, I'm Kashi, listen to my music. Because every time I did that, it always failed. I feel like really good music speaks for itself. Google asks, what is Kashi's real name? My name is Casey Tai Luong. Where did Keshi grow up? Keshi was born when I was in college. Um, Casey grew up in Sugarland, Texas. I'm born and raised there. Is uh, where my heart is. It's where my family is, and it's like familiar, comfortable, and I, I feel like a lot of people have wanderlust, but like I'm kind of okay just chilling out. Is Keshi single? No, I am not single. I am most definitely engaged to my best friend in the whole wide world, and her name is mine. We grew up together with childhood friends. The name Keshi comes from her parents, actually, because my name is Casey, and they are of Japanese descent. So whenever they said Casey, they would pronounce it Keshi. Mai and I met in middle school. She came from the UK in fifth grade, and uh, we went to Satoshi Middle School together. We shared PE class, sixth period, and then orchestra class, beginner orchestra class, seventh period. So that was one of the only people where I recognized that we had similar classes. So I think on like the second or third day of school, I was just like, hey, who are you? <laughs> we weren't neighbors, but our houses were close enough to where we'd find our like sort of middle meeting area, which was like the fountain, like it's like a big lake and a fountain in between our houses. So we would meet there in the dead of the summer we would walk out there and then we'd walk over to her house where her mom would make us um, like some Japanese sweets and stuff, so. Um, at Keshi Ij asks, do you sing in the shower? Not anymore, and I will tell you why. I think I was probably 15 or 16 years old. I had been playing the guitar for probably three and a half, four years at that point. And I started making covers and like recording myself um, singing. I did it way too early. I got hella bullied for trying to sing. I like didn't want to sing in front of anyone anymore at that point. I didn't want to sing in front of my family either. The only safe place for me to practice was in my shower. I would spend like 30 minutes, 45 minutes just being in the shower, just belting my voice out, trying to figure out the nuances of how to sing. And slowly but surely, on my own, I figured it out. Yeah, practice makes perfect. And welcome to the world's sickest revenge story. Fuckers. This is from Tweedledee Tweets. And they ask, would you rather have the ability to fly or the ability to not feel any physical pain? Pain is important for survival. Um, not just for the bedroom. So you need it to know when something's wrong, like when like your arm is burning or like you're getting a cut somewhere or like getting crushed by something. So I would much definitely rather fly, absolutely rather fly. But if we're talking about superpowers, I would say that the ability to teleport, I think we all agree was probably the most powerful one. But what if you teleported to the middle of a wall? Oh, what the heck? <laughs> That's great. I've never thought about that before. Oh, that would be so bad. I'm almost done now. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next question. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> At Into Casey asks, what's the best piece of advice another musician ever gave you? I think one of the most important pieces of advice that I got recently was um, from Maddion. We hadn't even started working on a track together yet. I think we were just getting introduced to each other. I was telling him that I was just getting started on working on an album and I was like scared out of my mind. Like I was scared to go into the studio, which is in my home. Like I just didn't want to walk in for like weeks at a time. I was afraid of not being able to make anything. I told him that and he said that I didn't need to be so worried about like making a cohesive work of art like just make art and the cohesiveness will reveal itself. And it made zero sense to me as someone who had, was like two tracks deep. But in hindsight, like, I don't even know why I was worried to begin with. And it meant a lot that like, he went out of his way to try to like, assuade my fears, so. Shout out Marion. Thank you for being such a cool friend. <laughs> At Gianna Agnes 07 asks, um, what advice would you have given to your younger self? 
I feel like it's completely okay to like make mistakes and it's okay to change your mind like on things. Like it's okay to be wrong. I feel like a lot of people like to act as if like things are so black and white, but everyone in life goes through like lessons and they make terrible mistakes and they like come out the other side because like life is like a like a process. Like you go through the entire thing. So don't be afraid. Like it'll be okay at the end of the day. The last. <laughs> Of course, this would be the last question. I'm not answering this question. Google asks, how tall is Cashew? I'm six feet, nine inches. 